Hello, hello. Welcome to lesson 4.3 with Mrs. Trombley. Today we're going to learn our final way of solving the system and the method we're going to use is called elimination. So you've learned from class, from my crazy example, that sometimes graphing and substitution are not the best way to go. And if your equations are set up properly, elimination can make it go quite quick and simple. So the reason that systems by elimination works, we talked about the addition and subtraction properties of equality in class, and it basically allows you to add or combine equations together to solve this system. And this method works best when you're given a system that contains like terms with opposite coefficients, and both equations are written in standard form. So I know we've used slope-intercept a lot. These equations are easiest to solve when the equation is written in the ax plus by equals c standard form. So there's basically four different scenarios that you're going to see. The first one is the nicest little scenario. If you see equations that are set up in standard form and you have like terms with opposite coefficients. So opposite means if I have 2 would be negative 2, the opposite of 5 would be negative 5, the opposite of negative 12 would be positive 12. So if you see the same digit with the opposite sign and it's an ax plus by equals c form, elimination is the way to go. So the steps when you see this, basically step number one is to add the equation. And when you add the equations, you're going to end up eliminating either the x or the y. That's why it's called elimination. So look at this first one. I have ax plus by equals c, ax plus by equals c. Here I have, I'm subtracting 2y, which makes that a negative 2y. Here I have a positive 2y. So sometimes you'll eliminate the x's, sometimes you'll eliminate the y's. In this case, we're going to get rid of the y's because those are the ones that would cancel out. So when I say to add the equations, literally you're going to add them. You can put an addition sign right there. And remember when you add, you can only add like terms together, right? Well, this x and this 5x, those are like terms. So x plus 5x is 6x. When you take negative 2y plus a positive 2y, those are gone right? You get 0. And now, of course, we need to take negative 19 plus 1. That's negative 18. So right now, I have another equation. I have 6x equals negative 18. So we can solve this for the x, right? All we have to do is divide each side by 6, and you get x equals negative 3. So right now, we have our x-coordinate in the ordered pair that makes both systems true. Now it's kind of like we're going right back to substitution. We know what x is, so I'm going to use x and plug it into one of the original equations. So that's what step two says. Substitute the value of the variable you found into one of the original equations to solve for the other variable. So if x is negative 3, I'm going to use this equation here where the x is already by itself. Negative 3 plus negative 2y should equal negative 19. So again, all I did was I took the x value that I just got and I plugged it into one of the two equations. It does not matter which one. I usually end up picking the one that's on top. It doesn't mean you have to. Either one's going to give you the same y value because remember, this xy ordered pair we get satisfies both equations. So in solving for this, I want to solve for y. That means I need this constant to go away first. I'm going to add a positive 3. Negative 2y is equal to negative 16. I'll divide each side by negative 2. And yes, y equals 8. That means my solution point would be negative 3, 8. Now we spent a lot of time checking all of our solutions in class. I'm not going to check every single one in these notes because I don't want it to take a million years to get through them, but you know how to check. So at this point what you should do is you should take negative 3 and 8 and plug it in for x and y in this equation. You should take negative 3 and 8 and plug it into x and y in that equation and make sure that it works for both. I know that that's the right answer because I have taught this lesson a lot of times. So trust me. But when you're taking a test, when you're taking a quiz, when you're checking your homework problems, plug that in, please. All right, another example in this set. When you look at these equations, they're both ax plus by equals c. I have opposite coefficients right there. So they're the same digit, they're the opposite. That means, yep, I'm going to use elimination. I'm going to add these together. So again, it's the y's that are being eliminated because those are the ones that have the opposite coefficient. 5x plus 3x equals 8x. 
And when you take a negative 32 plus a positive 48, you get 16. So I know that 8x equals 16. I'll divide each side by 8, and we get x is 2. So right now, we know what our x value is. It's 2. In order to figure out the y value, I just need to plug 2 in for the x either in this equation or in this equation. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to choose the top one because I always seem to. So 5 times x, which is 2, minus 6y is supposed to be negative 32. When I solve this, we'll know what y is. All right, 5 times 2 is 10, so now I have 10 minus 6y equals negative 32. I'm going to add the opposite here. I'd like this 10 to go away, so I'm going to add a negative 10. That means negative 6y equals negative 42. We're home free. Divide by negative 6, and I get y equals positive 7. So that means the solution to this system of equations is x2, y7. I see a lot of people make errors with the signs, like they might forget a negative divided by a negative is a positive. And when you plug those back into each, um, each equation, you'll be able to catch those kinds of mistakes. Okay, take a look at set number two. In these examples, we're going to have like terms with the same exact coefficient. So it's lacking the whole opposite sign business. It's really easy to fix, though. So when you look at this first example, we have a ax plus by equals c form on both of these. But notice, here I have the same coefficients. The y's match, but do you see how they're both positive? Those aren't going to cancel each other out. I need one to be positive and one to be negative. So when you see this happen, all you need to do is choose one of the equations and multiply it by a negative one before you begin. So I'll choose the top one. Why not? I'm going to take this entire equation, so I'm going to wrap it up so I know I want the whole thing, and multiply everything in it by a negative 1. So the new equation I end up with is negative 3x plus negative y equals, don't forget to change this sign as well, negative 29. Now those two equations have the same value. If you multiply everything by negative 1, you didn't change the value of anything, you just changed what it looked like. We didn't change the second equation at all. We don't want to because now I have the same coefficient with opposite signs. So now we can do what we did before. Add them up. Those y's are going to be eliminated. They're gone. And again, you don't always have to eliminate the y. It just so happens that that's what's happening with these. So negative 3x plus x gives me negative 2x. And when you take 29 plus a i sorry, negative 29 plus 17, you end up getting negative 12. I'm going to divide each side by negative 2, and we get x equals 6. So now we know what x is. x is 6. I'm going to plug that 6 into one of the two equations. Can you guess which one I'm going to use? I'm going to use this second one. Yep, because it's a little less complicated. So x plus y equals 17. That means that 6 plus y should equal 17. So all I did was take this 6, replace it with that x, because that's what x is. I'll subtract my 6 or add a negative 6, and I get y equals 11. That means my solution point, and it's not good enough just to list it like this. I want the point where they, the lines would cross. It's 6, 11. It goes x, y. And again, to make sure that you're right, you would take the 6 and the 11, plug them in for the x and y into both equations, not just one, but both of them to make sure that it works out. We have one more example like this, and then we'll move into a little bit more complicated. So when you're looking at these two equations, I have ay plus bx equals c. That's fine because the commutative property says that the order that we add terms does not matter. But it's not fine that the ones with the matching coefficients have the same sign. I need one of them to be negative. So I'll choose the top one to multiply by negative 1. You could choose the bottom one if you want. It doesn't matter. But the new equation for this ends up being negative 2y plus negative 7x equals negative 18. So I took that entire equation and multiplied it by negative 1. The other equation, we're going to leave it alone. I'm going to write it underneath so I, we can add them up. And again, sorry, we're going to eliminate the y's. I have a negative 2y and a positive 2y. When you add them up, they're gone. 
a negative 7x plus 3x is negative 4x, and negative 18 plus 2 is negative 16. To solve for x, we just need to divide by 4, and x equals a positive 4. Now that we know what x is, I'm going to plug it back in to one of the original equations. It doesn't matter which one. This time I'll choose the bottom one, just to be different. So I have 2y plus 3x equals 2. So 2y plus 3 times, we just got 4 for x equals 2, or 2y plus 12 equals 2. Okay, let's keep going. It's just a nice little two-step equation. So I'm going to add a negative 12 or subtract 12, same thing. We get 2y equals negative 10. To finish it up, we divide by 2 and get y equals negative 5. So my solution to this system is 4, negative 5. On a graph, that's where those two lines would intersect in a table. This is the y value that would repeat. Okay, take a look at your next page, set number 3. Okay, now sometimes... A system's not set up for elimination, meaning that you don't have opposite coefficients that match, but you can actually make it that way. Because I'm thinking, you probably like this method. This one's taking a lot less time, it feels like, to me at least. Okay, so sometimes systems aren't set up for elimination, but you can change it into a system, and by doing this, you're going to multiply one of the equations by a non-zero number. If you multiply an equation by zero, you have nothing left, and you can't solve the system. So please don't try multiplying things by zero. So remember to use a negative if you need to get the opposite value. Okay, so take a look. I have 7x plus 6y equals 2. I have 2x minus 3y equals 10. This system, when you look at it originally, you wouldn't think, wow, this is a nice one that's set up for elimination. What you can do, though, is you can make these match by choosing a number to multiply by. And... Yeah, I see with 7 and 2, I could make them into 14, but then I'd be changing both numbers. With this 3 and 6, I see first off that these have opposite signs. That's great. And if this were a 6y, wouldn't they be able to cancel out? Yes. What can you multiply 3 by to make it 6? 2. So we're going to take this entire equation, and we're going to multiply it by 2. We're not going to change that first equation, so I'm just going to rewrite it over here. But in our second equation, and again, we're not changing the value, we're just changing what it looks like, I'm going to distribute. And I'm going to add the opposite before I do. I would recommend you do that too. So 2 times 2x, that gives me 4x, plus 2 times negative 3y, that gives me negative 6y, and 2 times 10 gives me 20. So right now what we have done is, We've set it up so that we have a system that we can solve by elimination because 6y plus negative 6y will cancel out and then it'll allow me to solve for the x. So, gone. 7x plus 4x is 11x. 2 plus 20 is 22. Divide by your 11. And now we know that x equals 2. If we know that x equals 2, we can easily figure out what y is by using substitution. And uh, I'll use the top equation. I have 7x plus 6y equals 2. That means 7 times 2 plus 6y should equal 2. Or 14 plus 6y equals 2. I'm going to subtract or add the opposite, add a negative 14. 6y equals negative 12. In order to get y by itself, you would divide each side by 6. And we get y equals negative 2. So the solution to this system would be 2, negative 2. So very similar to what we did before, except in these, you need to make opposite coefficients take place. Okay, take a look at the next one. I have 3x plus 2y equals 26, and 5x plus 4y equals 14. Okay, again, when I see the numbers 2 and 4, I think, sweet, I would only need to change this one equation, because I can just multiply 2 by 2 to make it 4. But if you notice, aren't those both addition? Yep. So instead of multiplying just by a regular 2, I'm going to multiply this entire equation by a negative 2 because that will allow me to have an opposite sign with the same coefficient. So the first equation, and again, why I did this, this says 4y, this says 2y. I know that I can just multiply the 2 by 2 to get 4. 
and I know that if I have opposite signs, I can cancel things out. So this first equation would become negative 2 times 3x is negative 6x, negative 2 times 2y is negative 4y equals, and now I have to take negative 2 times the 26 as well. Don't forget. So that would be a negative 52. So there's my new first equation, new and improved. The second equation we're not going to change. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. There we go. So now when you look at these equations, it should take you back to example one where, hey, I have opposite coefficients that are the same, the same digit. So let's add them up. This negative 4y plus this positive 4y will cancel out. Negative 6x plus 5x is negative x or negative 1x. Whichever you have is totally fine. So now you need to go ahead and take a negative 52 plus 14. Click, 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 click. It's negative 38. I don't want to know what negative x is, though. I just want to know what a regular x is. Remember, when you see a negative x, that means negative 1x. We're going to divide each side by negative 1, and we get x equals 38. Don't think, well, that's a big number. It must be wrong. Nope. You get all kinds of numbers. So x equals 38. Knowing that, we just need to plug 38 into one of these equations. So I'll take the top one. Why not? doesn't matter. I'm going to use my original equation. So 3x plus 2y equals 26 means I'm going to have 3 times x, which is 38, plus 2y equals 26. When you take 3 times 38, maybe you're typing that in right now, we get 114. So 114 plus 2y equals 26. I want to get rid of that 114. So you can subtract 114 or you can add a negative 114 that means the same thing. So 2y will equal 26 plus negative 114. That's negative 88. I'll divide each side by 2. Sorry, they're not. You can see it. And y equals negative 44. So that means that so the solution to this system is 38 negative 44. Don't reverse the 2. Order does matter in an ordered pair. The 38 needs to go with the x, and the negative 44 needs to go with the y. All right, we're down to the home stretch, which is good because I don't have that many more minutes of film time left on my camera. Okay, so set number four, multiplying both equations. So in some systems, multiplying by one equation won't let you eliminate the, vari the variable. You can still use elimination, but this time we're going to multiply both equations by a non-zero number. And remember, we want to multiply by a negative non-zero number if we need to get an opposite sign. Okay, so take a look. I have 2x minus 3y equals 50, and 7x plus 8y equals negative 10. Okay, in looking at these, I can't take 2 and multiply it by a number to get 7, and I can't take 3 and multiply it by a number to get 8, right? Like in those other ones, we only needed to multiply 1. In these ones, it's not going to work. Now, if I wanted to, I could make one of these a 14x and one of these a negative 14x. But see here how we already have opposite signs going for the y term? I would choose to eliminate the y term because I don't have to mess with a negative. So in this equation here, if I want 3 and 8 to be sa the same, I can take 3 times the 8 and 8 times the 3. So here's what I mean. I'm going to take this entire equation and I'm going to multiply it by 8. And 8 times 2x is 16x. And I'll keep change, change it. 8 times negative 3y, that's negative 24y. And when you take 8 times 50, you get 400. So we just changed our first equation. Now in this one, I have to change the other one. Otherwise, I won't have opposite coefficients that match. So I'm going to take this equation, and I'm going to multiply it by 3. Because 3 times 7x is 21x. 3 times 8y is a positive 24y. And 3 times negative 10 is negative 30. So now what we just did was we changed these equations into equations that have opposite coefficients for the same variable. So now it's set up easy to eliminate. We're going to eliminate our y's. So negative 24y, positive 24y, gone. When you take 16x and you add 21x to that, we're going to get 37x. 
those y's of course are gone, and 400 plus negative 30 gives you 370. Don't you love when you see a 37 acts in a 370 and you're like, sweet, piece of cake. So divide each by 37 and x equals, you guessed it, 10. So I know that x equals 10, right? All I need to do is take this 10 for x and plug it into one of the original equations. I'll choose the first one. Why not? So 2 times x, which is 10, plus negative 3y equals 50 is my equation that I need to solve, or 20 plus negative 3y equals 50. I'm going to get rid of the constant first, the one without the variable, so negative 3y equals 30. Then I would divide by my negative 3, and we get y equals negative 10. So x is 10, y is negative 10, and again, you would plug 10 and negative 10 into both of your original equations to make sure that we did it right. Last one. Yay. Okay. So in these equations, I have 3x plus 2y equals 14 and 2x plus 3y equals 1. First off, I'm hoping you notice that both of the x's have positive and both of the y's are positive. So that means I'm going to need to change the sign of one of these numbers. And let's see. Why don't we eliminate the x's this time? Because we haven't done that. We keep eliminating the y's. So if I wanted to eliminate the x's, that means I mean one of these to be a negative 6 and one to be a positive 6. Because 3 times 2 is 6 and 2 times 3 is 6. So I'm going to multiply this equation by, how about we'll make this one the negative. And I'll multiply this equation by a positive 3. So negative 2 times 3x, that's negative 6x. Negative 2 times 2y is negative 4y, and negative 2 times 14 is negative 28. And our second equation, 3 times 2x is a positive 6x, 3 times 3y is a positive 9y, and 3 times 1 is 3. So those are our new equations that we're going to solve using elimination. We can see that, yay, we have opposite coefficients there. So negative 6x plus 6x, gone. Negative 4y plus 9y is 5y. Negative 28 plus 3 is negative 25. All I have to do to solve this one is divide each side by 5. So y equals negative 5. So now we know what y is. We're going to shoot back up to, I'll use the second equation because that equals 1. and I like when things equal 1. So in my original equation it says that 2 times x plus 3 times y, which is negative 5, is supposed to equal 1 or 2x plus negative 15 should equal 1. All right, I want to solve for that x, so I'm going to add 15 to each side. 2x equals 16. Divide by your 2, and x equals 8. So my ordered pair, the solution, would be 8, negative 5. And if you don't believe me, plug it in and see if it's right. See you tomorrow.